help. He said, well, you know, hopefully we can go and get a variance of some sort. He said, you understand everything that's going on now? I said, I know that, but it's definitely a shock. I just can't afford it. Uh, if you guys are looking at the news media, the name of my company is Tribe Incorporated. We're renovating Hudson Docket, uh, which in all of Lowndes County and Lowndes State history, we're the first minority contractors to pick up a federal contract. So very proud of that. And we're getting to a point where we're feeling that change is definitely being implemented for something like this to actually occur for the first time in history. So with that said, please take into consideration Variants to assist us as small business owners. Uh, so folks want to uplift the community here in the beautified that as well. But a lot of the folks here know them. Uh, I go door to door. I had 300 names on a petition. Those in favor, even those that was in opposition, that was actually moving forward with our plan to go. And I want to hear the response or the response from every individual to see how we can work together, even from the paper. I have some folks that's affiliated with the paper. High authority figures that's here. That's in favor of it. But doing with the politics, they want to just kind of address it. So please take your consideration. All right. Anyone else would like to give us any additional information? Lisa Kirkland, I live uh, 4016 Williams Lane, which is right off of Wheaton School Road. Um, it's right off of the edge of Wheaton School Road. Um, we went out yesterday, me and uh, Ms. Tina Barnes, and went to our petitions and talked to some of our community members. I uh, basically grew up there, I moved away, and I had to come back to see about my mother, who, who's the resident of the area along with me. And I know everybody on Williams Road and some people on uh, Johnson Road. And none of them had a problem with them farming on this land. Okay. None of them. I mean, we, every door we knocked on from Johnson and Williams School Road, even uh, this uh, Hardrick, she has farmland as well. And she, she couldn't get out today, but she wanted to just say she's really in support of being, letting it be farmed, because we need more farm, farmland as well. So for it to be farmed, nobody in the 30 people we got had had a problem with it at all. Okay. Anything else, or is that all in? We do have their names and signatures as well. We'll make that a part of the minutes. Is anyone here in opposition or anyone here needs clarification on what is being requested? Was there any response to your office, Ms. Bradwell, as far as this case? Yes, no, and different? There, there was a number of calls um, from you know, opponents to the request. And one letter actually received. Okay. Any other questions or discussions before we try to. <coughs> I, we try I like, to this, this is for the members of the DPOA, but I'm not sure it's in the best interest of the community in the long term to give a variance that will be in perpetuity, but perhaps a variance with a set number of years where they would have uh, an opportunity to do what they are asking for, at which point we would um, re-examine the issue or they would come and re-examine the issue. Uh, what, what is the legality of putting a time limit? Is that within our power? Or yes, that? you can impose any condition necessary. Um, enforcement, that's another issue. <laughs> But uh, we'll do our best to, to enforce it. You know, it'd be it once, one year, two years. Yes. If it were granted with some stipulation for a time limit, any enforcement beyond that would be complaint driven. Somebody would have to complain probably to bring it to our attention. 
and if it was granted with a time limit, at the end of that time limit, would they be prohibited from asking for an additional variance or an extension to that variance? Or are we closing the door on? They wouldn't. They would not be prohibited. They would be required to come back before you, before you all, and we would do due process, of course, notifying all the neighbors and public hearing. Um, same, same process we went through here. Advertise in the paper, put the sign on the property, send certified mail to adjacent property owners. Yes, sir. And look at the scope of activities. Huh? Well, I, I think really when you, when we grant, and I'm assuming if it is granted, if it were granted as a reestablishment of a non-conforming use, the non-conforming use is agriculture, which, that I mean, agricultural means you're growing something for harvest, which is going to prevent them from trying to put any other kind of limited manufacturing or storage facility or something like that. It's got to be farming agricultural. And I, I'm a little hesitant to try to narrow the window on agricultural real tight. Well, you open the door to livestock. You know, that's something to consider. I have well, we, is there again, it's within the scope of this board. We can say no livestock, you know, no, no cattle, no horses, no pigs, no no animals of any kind. It has to be crop agricultural. That's within the scope of this board. But, but we've had no, no, I mean, no opposition has spoken today saying I don't want cattle there. So, I mean, why put conditions out there that, that are not an issue at this point? I, I have a couple of questions. If, if they had planted trees, a, a, hop, a timber crop on there, that would continue then to have all these years that the trees had been growing. That would have been a non-conforming use in something. But because they had annual row crops of cotton, peanuts, corn, soybeans, and they stopped doing it, then it became an expired non-conforming use. Is that correct? That is correct. If they planted trees now, they just said they were going to have timber harvest. Harvest, that's what I grow. I think about that a lot. Uh, that takes 15 years to harvest the crop. Yeah, 15 to 25 years, depending on your use. Yeah. So um, that could be a very long uh, extension. Now, on the other side of it, in my neighborhood, there was a piece of property which was zoned in a certain way that I was unaware of, or something, 21, uh, and it had timber growing on it. And then when they cut the trees down, they built all those houses, and it was sort of a surprise. So. Um, the Board of Commissioners already said that a planned development in that neighborhood is a perfectly appropriate use. And if they had continued farming all along, just waiting for the economy to pick up, rather than thinking in 2007 when we thought we were still going upwards, uh, stop it. And then coming down. Now he has a gap. If he could have maintained that agricultural operation, then we would be but it ceased, and he lost that not conforming right. I don't know about anybody else, but my crystal ball doesn't tell me how long it's going to be before the economy comes back sufficient to do some of this. So I think we need to sort of be careful of how tight we pull the reins. I, I don't want to give them 20 years or so, but I, at the same time, I don't know that two or three or four is sufficient to turn the economy around. So what, what do y'all think? I think we have a check, check and balance in place already as to how long this individual can use this property for this purpose. But if they decide to stop using this property for, for the purpose, policy procedures are already laid out for them to take the route that they need to take. Of the project or continue growing produce. If they had been growing all along, there would be no expiration. It's only because they stopped. Yeah. Correct. So I, I'm, I'm, if we grant the variance, I'm not inclined to put a deadline on it. It's right. just the resumption of a non conforming use. 
Carmelo, are there any other <coughs> conditions that staff would like to recommend to the board? Other than just a buffer, you know, and I think Mr. Robinson is open to that. Um, our concern was the buffer along that western um, portion of that property where there, there are established residences there. And there is a tree line. gave up their planned development and went back to a state agriculture, there would be no buffer. Their their property would be zoned however they got it zoned and they could farm right up to the property line. Yes. So RA requires a buffer, but EA does So uh, by putting a buffer on with their current zoning, that would be, um, they, they're actually making a concession really there. What will happen, um, let's fast forward and assume we're eight, ten years down the road and, and the development's got a green light, the investors are ready to go. What will be required of them to come back? Will there be any requirements to come back to you to notify you that that development's taking place? Or can they just simply go out there and start and their building permit? The zoning will be correct for it already, so technically he can just go obtain a building permit whenever he's ready, right? <coughs> Harvest the last row of crop, okay. then you're ready to go again, unless you go plant it for the next year. It feels like it's not quite time. And then something, just something to consider. Um, the possibility of, of dual operation, that, that was another concern. You know, maybe he wants to develop the northern portion of the property, but, you know, the southern portion, agriculture. Is there, do you want to have a use one or the other, or is that? Uh, well, I, I, yeah, I would think that you know, as long as they're not going to develop it, then they can farm it. But I think, and the board can speak for themselves, but I think once they start cutting roads and cutting lots, I think they need to go ahead and stay with the PD from that point forward. And it makes you well, take care of itself, you know, kind of shooting yourself in the foot. Well, and the other thing, it, it, it may not be an issue because they can't build in the wetlands, so where are they going to build? They're going to build on uh, the, the farm, you know, the area, I mean, the uh, upland land. So that's going to take care of itself to start with the problem. Well, you know if the, ULDC has been updated or changed to let farmers let their lands lie fallow for a year or two years as is common practice in farming. Actually, those properties already have the agricultural zoning, so right. I can see where this would be a factor with, with this. But there are other areas in this county that were changed, the zoning was changed for residential that will. It'd be a different circumstance, but they can very well lose their non-conforming status. So I, you know, I would suspect you'll have a, another request um, for those properties that were changed. Any other discussion? Can I entertain a motion on this request? A reestablishment of a non-conforming use. So moved. Second. Second. I have a motion for motion. approval of the marriage request to continue non conforming use with no, no uh, condition. No time. At no time. No, no, no conditions. No conditions at all. Okay. We have motion on the floor from the storage team to grant the request as presented to reestablish the non conforming use of an agricultural activity. You want to get here on possibly leaving, but you want to exclude that. No condition. No condition, right. 
motion on the floor adopted from uh, Mr. Orenstein to grant the request as presented reestablishment of a non conforming use agricultural use with no stipulations this time, no stipulations to vote. I have a second from Dr. Halvin. All the top criteria. criteria. The, the criteria B. All in favor of the motion, please raise a hand. Unanimous. Good luck with it, gentlemen. We hope Thank everything will work out for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. The next case is the City of Alabama case. Application 0012-01-RREMC LLC, 1328 North St. Augustine Road.
large directional sign, the monument sign, uh, the one that is serving one business, which is what those directional signs serve. This could serve up to five different businesses. Uh, you notice some different logos, Denny's and Burger King Grill. Um, Long term, Denny's is proposing to add in a second restaurant with the building as part of the redevelopment plan for that property. It's something that I think Denny's is doing elsewhere. Um, it's come back up to the ladder, Tracy. All right here, let's go back to one. Here's the sign that has to be relocated. Here's the other directional sign that's currently there. And then the west entrance, you see the other two. The applicant is proposing to retain those as is and not make any changes to that west entrance. So back up one. And then you see the other three standing signs that are there. Go back one more. There we go. And here is just a, a zoomed in version of that five year old aerial image where you can see the four directional signs and the sizes that are there. Um, the new aligned Twin Street right in this location. Since we're doing all this enhancement, having this traffic signal, we want this to be. 